Hello everyone, this is Pastor Stewart of Destiny Preparation. Welcome you once again to Road to Destiny. I want to tell you wherever you are, we're glad to be able to connect up with you right now uh, through this program. And uh, for those of you who are repeat watchers, I'm honored that you're watching the program. I pray that you're getting something out of it, that it's inspiring you, and we would love to hear from you. By the way, if you're a first time watcher too, just passing through and catching this on, on television, we are honored to have you with us. I hope you'll stick around and I hope you'll get something out of this. I'm just gonna talk for a couple of minutes and then we're gonna share it with you from the Word of God. Uh, make sure and tell uh, your friends. They can catch us here. This is on Spectrum TV, channel 1301. It's also in the city on RC TV uh, every weekend here uh, on this program and uh, we, we continue to give you something that we pray was going to bless you and so you can also connect up on Facebook on our Facebook page you can also catch our uh, archives of these uh, programs on our YouTube channel so you want to go there if you want to connect up a, a full series or if you want to you need something from the past you'll see the subjects the titles and it's all right there for you to receive something from but we'd love to hear from you I want to hear if this has been blessing you. I want to hear if, if this is helping you. And I'd love to hear that you're sharing this with somebody else too, either by linking it through Facebook or uh, by calling somebody, telling them about the program times. Uh, if you have something positive to say, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to give us a call. Eric call 585-789-1DPC is the DPC hotline. You can call that number and uh, we would love to connect up with you. Or you can also email us, WD Stewart at destinypreparation.org. We would love to have you connect up. If you have a prayer request, by the way, you can feel free to connect up with us at prayer at destinypreparation.org. We'd love to get your request coming through there as well. You can also call us on Saturday mornings for our prayer phone line. And we have a prayer line that connects people from all over the country. You can render your prayer request there as well. And uh, we would love to have, receive something from you when you, uh, as you call into that number. If you'd like us to pray for something, let us know. We'll pray for you right there in the middle of that call. Uh, we're praying for people all over the city, in the church. It's not just for this church, it's for whosoever needs it. So feel free to connect up with us here at Destiny Preparation Church. Now I want to take you to a sermon, an excerpt of a sermon that I believe will be a blessing to you. We want to talk about clean hearts. And I really believe this is something God calls on us for. Throughout this year, we've had this real call of God for self-examination. It's so important for us sometimes to stop and really uh, allow God to reveal in us things that are not what He wants to be. We, when I say, tell people, when you decide that you want to be close to God and you seek God and you tell God, Lord, I want to be close to you, one of the first things that will happen is He'll begin to reveal to you things that are in you that are in the way. Things that are preventing Him from being able to connect with you like He wants to. Because those things, sin has to be cleaned out of your heart. Even, you know, you may not consider it sin, but my personality is a certain way, or I'm resistant of yielding or surrendering certain things or giving certain things for God. Just like the rich young ruler, young man that came to Jesus Christ wanting to know what else he needed to do to be in line with God. God will reveal to you things that need to come out of the way for him to truly have that place in your life. So I want to encourage you to listen to the sermon. I pray that it will bless you and encourage you and inspire you to take that next step of allowing God to, to, to show you what he needs and is looking for you to change or to release or let go of in your life so that he can truly connect you with you and use you. God bless you. We'd love to hear from you. If this blesses you, I want to hear from you. All right? God bless you. We need to look at ourselves. It's very easy to look at the other person. Anybody notice that? It's real easy. Your eyes work a lot better out than they do in. You notice that? Uh, it, it's very easy. And the Bible talks about how sometimes, you know, how, how can you be upset about the little little thin bowl in somebody else's eye when you have this whole big knot sticking out of yours? I'll paraphrase that a little bit for you. But, but, but you know, that the, the, the Lord talks about that because so many times we find fault with everybody else. And, and when God deals with it, oftentimes, typically, he doesn't deal with the, the other person. He deals with us, right? The faults that we try and point to other people, God ends up pointing back to us. We have to learn how to look at me. And I want to encourage you that there's some things about us, you know, instead of, uh, I don't want to say this harshly, but I'll say it this way, instead of making excuses for what we do or don't do, 
we have to take a real candid look at ourselves. And we have to allow the Lord to show us, reveal us ourselves, and then be willing to do something about ourselves and not wait for everybody else to get right. Amen? We can't afford, we'll never get there if we're waiting for everybody else to get straight. We have to learn how to allow God to deal with us. And if he deals with each of us the way we need to be dealt with, because each and every one of us have our own issues that need to be dealt with in our own way. Amen. Amen? Tell somebody, stop looking at me. Look at yourself. I'm about to go into my sermon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me just, let me move on. Psalms 51, verse 10. Spoke about this a little bit one of the days during consecration. I'm just going to move on because y'all ain't got it by now. Hallelujah. We're going to keep praying. Psalm 51, verse 10, is a very familiar passage of Scripture for many of us. It says, create in me a clean heart. Everybody say that. Create in me a clean heart. Say it again. Everybody together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's do it again. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. This is a very passionate word that was shared by David. You say David, but truthfully, it's King David. The reason that's important is to understand his position and his rank as a senior person. This is a person that is elevated. This is a person that's well-regarded, well-respected. This is a person that is to be honored. But in this particular moment, he is humbled. He is humbled before his God. Because while he might be the king of others and no one would dare speak of his wrongdoing, his God, before his God, he is humbled and he realizes that he is nothing. He asks the Lord, Lord, create in me a clean heart, renew me a right spirit, because he knows he has not been right. One of the interesting things about this, and you know this, this ties to the story of David and Bathsheba. You know that story where David made a, a, a couple mistakes. Um, you know, for us it would be like, oops, we just made a little mistake. Amen. But David made a lot of mistakes in that one. Amen. He lusted after a woman. He took a woman that was already married, even though he was married. Amen. He had his way with her. He then went about to try and cover it up when he found out she was pregnant. He tried to cover it up by having her husband come and, and lay with her and pretend it was, wasn't his, it was, it was the husband's. When that didn't work, he tried to get him drunk. When that didn't work, he finally sent him back to war and sent a message to put him in the front lines of the war so he knowing, knowing he would be killed. And then he could take his wife. That's pretty rough. As a child of God, how many of y'all know sometimes as children of God, we do some rough stuff. Thank God he hasn't thrown us away. Hallelujah. Come on. You know your own sins. Glory to God. Amen. But, but the thing about David is that even though he did something that is almost speechless, you don't even want to say this. And a man of his position as well, the leader of his people to do something this downright dirty to take advantage of his position of authority, to abuse his power, to do, use all kind of mischievous means, to, to use all of his mis... I'm staying away from that. To, to, to do all these things to get his way in a situation that was for his own personal interest. Y'all, you know, you think that's, that's, that's a bad situation. But the thing about David was David was truly humble. And, and another thing to keep in mind is that how blinded he was in what he was doing. David never stopped to really realize how wrong he was. One lie, one sin, one issue led to the next, led to the next, led to the next. Until before you know it, he was doing things that he could not even have fathomed himself doing. But one step led to the next to the next. This should sound familiar to some of us because we didn't get everywhere we are uh, in one night, in one moment. But one thing leads to the next. We say one lie leads to the next lie, to the next lie. Well, now you got a lie to cover the lie that you told when you lied. Sin leads from one step to the next to the next. 
and he finds himself in a place. And here's your danger. When you're sinning and you get comfortable with it, because sooner or later you start making excuses for your sin. Sooner or later, your sin is not as bad as somebody else's sin. Sooner or later, somebody else is doing the same wrong that you're doing, but you're okay with it because you have a justification why it's okay for you to do it, even though you look at somebody else. I told you about that thimble and, and the, the boulder thing. You know, sooner or later, what other people are doing, they're doing the same thing and they're wrong, but you're doing it and you're right. They wrong for gossiping, but you're the one telling somebody else about what they said. Mm -hmm. They're wrong for lying, but in the right situation, you feel it's okay to lie, right? If we're not careful, we walk down a line, and the most dangerous, worst situation is when you get comfortable with doing things that you know are not the purpose and will of God, particularly in your life. Because sometimes if you look at yourself, you'll find that the way you're behaving, the things you're doing, the places that you are, are not representative of what God made you to be. Am I preaching today? I'm only on the first line of my text. Glory to God. We, when, when we, we need to understand that when we get to a place, the Bible says elsewhere, I believe it's in Jeremiah, it says that they lie down in their sins and confusion covereth them up. That scripture describes what happens to us when we sin and keep sinning. Because the first time you do it, you feel guilty. The first time you do it, you may feel embarrassed. You may feel dirty. You may feel like I should never have done that and I'll never do it again. You lie down in your shame. I, I'm ashamed of what I should never should have done. Why did I? What was I thinking? How did that happen to me? But if you continue to do the same thing over and over again, you move from that guilt and that shame to, well, you know, I, I can't help it. To, to, well, okay, I guess it's not that bad. Well, you know, I need to do that. I had to do that. They made me do it. The situation forced it on me. It wasn't my fault. And confusion covers us up. Because after a while, if you keep doing the same wrong thing, eventually you stop even realizing it's wrong. There are many people out there that rationalize their behavior and say, well, that's just, you know, it just is what it is. It didn't start that way. But over the course of time, we get comfortable enough with what we do. Some people keep doing stuff thinking they'll never get caught. And the first time you were watching and checking everything, that's why some people get caught. Because the more they do it, they get too comfortable. And as they get comfortable, they start making mistakes. And when they start making mistakes, sooner or later they get caught. The police just wait for you for that. Do it again. Let me see. Try one more time. Do it a couple more times. Let's see what happens. Because sooner or later, you're going to get comfortable enough to start making mistakes. Lie in our sin. And confusion covers us up. What I really came to talk to you about, I move on to line number two. Oh, God. Uh, it is the heart. Because the heart represents the inside of us, the part of us through which all these things flow and emanate. The heart represents your soul. When people in the Bible talks about your heart and the matter of your heart and how your heart is, it's not talking about your physical heart. It's talking about your identi identity, who you are, you, you the person, you the personality. Let not your heart be troubled. It's talking about you, your person. Don't be troubled by what the by what's happening in, in, in your life. Don't let it discourage your person, your, your innermost being. Your your heart is the central aspect of who you are. It is the most center central part and I, of I, of your identity. Everything about you, your personality, exhumes from what is called your heart. We call it your soul. It's the part of you that will live after you die. It's the part of you that will continue on. It's who you are and who you will always continue to be. If you're a grouchy person, that comes from your personality. That comes from your soul. That comes from your heart. If you're a happy person, if you're a joyous person, that's the character that's in your heart. If you're a mean person, if you're a lying person, that's, that's what's in your heart. That's the identity of who you are. David was known to be a man after God's own heart. 
meaning that he loved to do the things of God. He loved to align with God. It's like when you get married to someone and you align with them personality-wise, you find over the course of time your personalities begin to align themselves. You, you transition a little bit as you begin to learn to fit together with each other. David had a heart that aligned with the things of God. Whatever God wants, that's what I want. Whatever makes God happy, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. His desires were for the Lord. You know the scripture, one thing have I desired the Lord, and that will I seek after. I, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. All the, I want to be whatever God wants me to be. He loved God, sought after God. God was his true priority in everything that he did. And so his heart and that, that aspect of him influenced everything that he did. His actions were responses of what was in his heart. His behaviors were responsive of what was in his heart. That's why, for example, when he took over the kingdom, the Bible said that Saul had allowed the Ark of the Covenant to go off, and it, lit, and it, it was actually residing on the very fringes of the whole nation. It, it was not central at all. Saul had nothing to do with it. If you don't know, the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. And, and Saul had nothing to do with it. It was way out on the edge of not only the town, but on the edge of the country. It had no value to him. As soon as David came in, the first order of business that he had was we need to get the ark back here. Not only in the nation, not only in the city, I need it in my own house. I need it in the tabernacle right next to me. I need to be able to consult, to go to God every day. I need to wake up in the morning and know that God is right next to me. I need to go to sleep at night knowing that the spirit of God is still right there. That's the kind of heart he had for God. He desired after heart, after God. But we realize from what we already said that he was not a perfect individual. Even though he had this heart and this passion towards God, he didn't make all the right decisions sometimes. And many times when, when he made the wrong decisions, it was because he had become distracted from his relationship with God. We have to be careful more, I think, today than ever that we do not allow ourselves to get distracted when it comes to God. What do you mean when it comes to God? When other things start getting in the way of, of our relationship with God. When you have to start compromising yourself for other things or for other people, amen, when it comes to God. Uh, when, when, you, when you know you need to be praying, but other people are drawing and pulling on you. When you know you need to be in God's presence, but oh, I gotta do this and, and the job is calling for this and this situation and my family, even your children can get in the midst or in the way of God. Do you hear me today? We have to be conscious and careful. Nothing distracts us from our relationship. Child, I love you, but listen, God is calling and God's got to be first because, because of God, you're going to act right. Because of God, your life's going to be turned around. Because of God, the, the blessings of God are going to flow, amen, into your life. So I, I love you, but I can't put you before God. Are y'all hearing me today? It wasn't perfect. And in Psalms 51, it indicates to us that, that, that Psalms 51 was a result of failing God. But the thing about it is still he has this heart. And when he becomes alerted and, and awake to the fact that, man, I messed up. I messed up. Man, what was I thinking? What was I? How did I get where I was? I was doing all right. And, and you, but you trace back your steps. I was OK. I was close to God. And, and then what happened? Where, where did I get, go wrong? What mistake did I make? His heart is sorrowful to God. And as a result of that, he's pouring out to God, Lord, please get me right. Help me to get back. Restore unto me the joy of my spirit. The verse 11 after this, Lord, do not do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. I know I don't deserve it. I know I messed up. But God, the, the, I can't live without your presence. That's a heart that desires God more than anything. God, whatever you've got to take away from me, amen, just, just please, Lord, don't take your spirit away. Listen, he had just seen God do it to Saul. Where Saul, amen, had turned and, and, and turned away from him, and God removed his spirit from Saul. Lord, don't do me what happened to Saul. I know he made mistakes, and you took your spirit away. I don't want you to leave me. Forgive me of what, give me another chance, God. I want to be in your presence, whatever I have to do. That's a heart that desires after God. 
I want you to understand that God seeks and knows us from the heart. I'm trying to keep moving. God seeks and knows us from the heart. He knows us from the inside out. He doesn't know us just because of our behavior, because of our actions. He doesn't know us just because of what we wear. He doesn't know us just because of the songs that we sing. He knows what's going on on the inside. Listen, your outside actions speak one thing, but your heart is where the truth is found. Some people hide their true feelings. Y'all know what it is to, you know, sometimes put on a face. Uh, and, and, and sometimes the way you, what you say and, and the way you behave, you be looking one way and, and feeling a whole nother some kind of way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey, my, my, I'm, try, I'm trying to behave myself here. I'm, and if you watch them close, you see them, them knuckles. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You see them teeth grinding. Uh, you know, my jaw hurts. I don't know why my jaw hurts so much. I got pain in my jaw. It's because you're grinding, because you, you're trying to hold it all in. Hey, there are things going on, on the inside. And, and so sometimes we try and hide our, our true reality of who we are and where we are and what we're about. Amen. And we try and, and, and do different things and by monitoring our behaviors, our, our actions. But the truth is always found out eventually. I tell people, you want to know who somebody, what somebody's all about, you just keep watching them. And especially you watch them when the pressure's on. Because we act a certain way and we can handle certain things when things are good, when life is okay. You know, we can handle it. But watch what happens when the pressure really comes on. When you begin to tighten down them thumb screws, amen, on life. And, and man, you know, I used to be okay. And a lot of us are okay as long as we're in control of stuff. But when we start losing control of it and the th it starts tightening down, then we find out how much you really believe in God. Amen. Because, oh, man, I, I was OK with doing this and that. But now I got to take action. I got to do this. We find out what's on the inside. Amen. But God, amen, doesn't have to do that. He knows what God knows you from the inside. Listen, you can't hide anything from God. You might think you're hiding from God. But God is looking down right now in this congregation and he sees every heart and he knows exactly who and where you are. You might look like you're something, but God knows exactly who and what you are. He knows exactly where your priorities are. He knows exactly how much of you you will give to him and how much you hold for your own stuff. He knows exactly how far you will go. That's why he was able to say, Can you, have you considered my servant Job? Because he knew his heart. He knew what he would do. Even before the devil showed up, he knew exactly what he was going to do because he knew his, knew his heart. Now, I want you to think for a moment. God knows your heart. What does that mean? What does he know about you that you don't want anybody to know? What does he know about your personality that you, you've been holding up, holding up and hiding up on? What does he know about your behavior? What do you know about what you did last night? Hmm. What does he know about where your mind is at and, and what's on your priority list? Come on, somebody. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, I got several scriptures. Y'all only need the tape for this one. Luke 6 and 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure in his heart bringeth forth that which is evil evil for the abund for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh sooner or later what's in you is what comes out you can see how some people even when they're trying to be nice uh -huh, even when they're trying to be nice what's coming at their mouth has that slant to it it has that little twang in it. It's mm -hmm. it, it, trying to be good and, and it's like mm -hmm, yeah okay right because you can't help what's in your heart amen you're, out of the abundance of your heart uh, is the, the mouth speaketh. Out of the, sooner or later, what's in you is coming out. And God knows exactly where you stand. He always knows exactly where you stand. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Well, we like to think we're pretty good. I'm generally a nice person. I'm a pretty good guy. I, I do nice things for people. Amen. I help a person out every now and then. But the Bible tells us that your heart is not as good as you think it is. 
especially without God in it. Amen. When you when you are godless, that heart will do what what you want to do. Amen. And, and if somebody messes with you, Lord, have mercy. If somebody gets on your wrong side, come on, somebody. Amen. If, if that heart is not registered with God, if it is not regulated by God, that heart is going to do what it wants to do. It's going to feel. Listen, you can't have joy and pain. We were talking about that earlier. Amen. If your heart is not in the heart hand of God. Amen. Your pain. Amen. You don't have no joy. Uh, you coming back with something other than joy. Amen. You, you can't just turn. That's why people have such a hard time with that scripture. Turn the other cheek. Uh, because my heart ain't feeling like turning no cheek. My heart is feeling like doing. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. It's hard sometimes for us to, to do the things of God because our heart is not there. It's hard for us to love our enemies. It's hard for us to forgive those that come against us because our heart isn't there. The heart is, is deceitfully, it's, it's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10, back in Jeremiah 17, says, I, the Lord, search the heart. God is searching your heart today. He knows what's in your heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. God knows your heart. Tell somebody you can't hide from God. Tell him it is what it is. And God knows what it is. Pride. 